Well, after the 2016 and 2020 elections, many lost faith in public opinion polls. The narrative out of those contests was that the polls got things really wrong. Now, while we've litigated that in depth here and determined that it was actually the forecasters who were off, the polls were fairly accurate when it came to the national numbers. You'd be forgiven if you were still skeptical. A recent piece from The Intercept reveals how two major Democratic polling firms in particular have deep client ties in big business that directly presents massive conflicts of interest. It says, quote, because they work behind the scenes, pollsters have a unique ability to escape scrutiny in American politics. Some of these firms have exploited that immunity to cash in on a startling amount of well-paid work that is directly and immediately at odds with the goals of the clients whose missions they claim to share. Journalism fellow at The Intercept, Alex Weatherhead, joins us now to expand on his reporting. Welcome, Alex. Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me. And so you, you focused on two firms in, in your investigation here, but uh, it's actually, it goes, you know, as, as you note in the story, it goes kind of far, far beyond this. Uh, it's, it's typical for uh, Democratic polling firms, it turns out, to take corporate clients on the side. Now, one of them that you wrote about, you know, specifically does not do that has has worked for some nonprofits that have that themselves sometimes operate as as fronts for major corporate corporations but that you know a, a bunch of them just straight up are doing work for Exxon you know not not a front group just straight up you know Exxon while then also advising right. Democrats about how they ought to message around climate change or so what what type of what type of conflicts did you find and how do you see it kind of playing out in the messaging that Democrats uh, come up with? Uh, that's, that's a great question. And so a lot of the things that we saw uh, through the investigation were uh, partnerships between these polling firms, uh, Global Strategy Group uh, and Lake Research Partners with um, big pharma companies like um, uh, you have partnerships with uh, GlaxoSmithKline, Purdue Pharma, et cetera. And, and you have um, these democratic politicians that also work with these companies who are then uh, going to make decisions about the future of, of healthcare in the United States. And, and obviously that's a big conflict of interest because what is good for these big pharmaceutical companies is not necessarily what's good for your average American. And can you tell us a little bit about the, the Andrew Cuomo situation that you wrote about? Yeah, absolutely. That's a, a specifically interesting case. Uh, you know, when Andrew Cuomo went uh, to the stage to give what I call the now infamous Italian defense uh, to the allegations that he had sexually harassed 11 women, uh, he had uh, his top aide was, you know, in, in behind the stage and she was in direct contact with a team who had helped craft his response to this. And one of those members of that team was uh, Jeff Pollack, who is the um, founder and, and president of Global Strategy Group. And he was in this group chat urging, please, please sound more contrite. Uh, you know, the, the governor needs to sound more contrite. And it's just two years prior to that, uh, Global Strategy Group, Jeff Pollack's company, had uh, issued, uh, had done polling with Time's Up, the celebrity-led um, organization or nonprofit to, uh, to combat sexual harassment and support the victims of sexual harassment. And this study that, that they had put out was on how politicians should be responding to either allegations of sexual harassment or it's on voters' opinions of politicians who have been credibly accused of sexual harassment. So he was pretty well um, plugged in and, and well prepared to give, uh, give feedback on the response. I mean, his, his company had written the book on it. Is it that these firms are not being honest or maybe they're being deceptive? with the public about who funds them and who directs them because you know if they're if if, if they're if they're just kind of providing research you know to their to their clients you might say okay well it's it's you know there's we should take it with a grain of salt i guess but right. obviously that's something that's going to go on but they're they're purporting to be these kind of larger sort of messaging entities for for democrats in general when they're specifically getting money from 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 groups that might be at odds with the policies of Democrats, is that the issue? I, I think the issue is is sort of twofold. Uh, one issue is obviously that they could be advising uh, their Democratic clientele uh, in the interests 
of their corporate clientele, you know, urging someone to push uh, push legislation that would um, be a net gain for the companies that they work for, the corporations that they work for, and not necessarily the American public. But the other issue that I see is how they are able to make a lot of money playing both sides of a lot of issues. Um, Global Strategy Group, who who worked with uh, Senator Chris, Kristen Gillibrand, um, you know, she put forward an act to kind of hold big tech accountable and and protect people's privacy. However, they also were working for Meta, and who had just years prior, you know, settled with a, a lot of money in their role in the Cambridge Analytica scandal. So either they're advising people to to kind of compromise and and fatten the wallets of some of their corporate clientele or they're just happy making a lot of money playing both sides of the, of the issue yeah because I, I imagine they could and they could play both sides in two ways in, in the example you just gave where uh they, they they might be you know giving uh research to a political candidate to get them to do something to be favorable for a corporate right. candidate or also they could give research to a political candidate to do something hostile toward a corporate candidate so then they can turn right. to the or to the corporate client and say you need us to help explain to you how to make your business more popular to protect it from this kind of legislation right yeah. and that absolutely happens like <laughs> that's I, incredible I, I know i know lobbyists what a great who scheme do, who do that it's a mo it's a mob scheme like yeah nice uh, nice company racket. you got yeah. there yeah shame yeah. if something happened to be it same if kirsten, be a shame if kirsten gillibrand happened to it this sounds a lot like how clinical studies happen you know it's like big sugar funds a clinical study and then this clinical study comes out and says sugar's great for you or it doesn't cause diabetes or it doesn't have you know our study found xyz thing and it sounds to me when we're talking about these polls and uh, how they're funded it sounds a lot like clinical studies and so one big question that people would have is how do we know which polls to trust uh that's that's a really great question and i think it's just like most things, it's you got to follow the money uh, to an extent. In in my research, all of the the sources that I cited uh, in in the publication of this article are open source. Um, you can find all of this online. I didn't have to dig too deep on a lot of this stuff to kind of figure out uh, what was going on here. If you can find out who's conducting the polling and find out what other kind of partnerships they have then I think you can kind of get uh, the, the gist of what they're, what they're angling towards. Um, I, I've always said that if, if you've got, if you've ever um, Facebook stalked your ex to see what they're up to years later, you've got the tools to be an investigative journalist. And uh, so if, if you can do that, you can kind of figure out what these polls are, what their interests are. Yeah, and, and Alex, just pulling from your story, you, you, met, you also mentioned Green, Greenberg, Quinlan, Rosner, which does tons of polling for the DCCC, so they're setting kind of the messaging that all of right. the House Democrats are, are then running on. You know, and they, you, they've, their corporate clients, Monsanto, Verizon, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, United Healthcare, and of course, DCCC is, you know, one of their, one of their strongest arguments they make is don't talk about right. Medicare for all. Uh, you talk about heart Heart Research Association, another prominent Democratic pollster, they work with pharma, the, you know, pharma school, that's mm -hmm. like big, literally big pharma, uh, as well as Eli Lilly. You mentioned SKDK, you know, huge firm that worked for uh, Joe Biden, for instance, right. um, you know, has all sorts of uh, clients that can sometimes come in conflict with the, with the Democratic agenda. And so if you're like a, if you're a Democratic candidate, um, what would you, you know, how would you go about trying to get uh, advice from a, a pollster that is that is not tainted by this type of influence that's a very good question because i don't i'm not sure how much of these um these firms are not tainted by that influence um i, I you know i don't have a, a rolodex of all the the polling right. firms that are out there but i i would say one of the the things that we've heard in response to this this article is that, well, why are you coming at the Democrats for this? If everyone plays the game, then shouldn't they be on a level playing field? And, you know, sort of uh, uh, hate the game, but not the player, if you will. Hmm. And and to, to that, I would say if if the standard that we're holding ourselves to is that those other people that we don't like 
are doing it as well, then perhaps we're not holding ourselves to a very high standard. Well, Alex, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you very much for having me. We'll have more Rising right after this.